Hi everyone, welcome back to the Put Yourself First podcast and we are live on Instagram recording this episode today. So I wanted to come on here and talk about how I silenced and worked to quieten my inner critic or as I've titled this live podcast recording, how I silenced my inner bitch. And I use this language because I feel like for my, in my experience, my inner critic was this very hypercritical voice that was holding me to such high standards that were basically impossible. And I work with so many women who feel like they would identify as a perfectionist and specifically like having that voice internally that is always nitpicking that is always like it's never quite good enough for and also then beating themselves up when they're not perfect or they've made a mistake or they have a setback and as that relates to you know our work together like mindset and manifestation if you want to achieve something, if you have a goal, if you are trying to move forward and make progress with something and you have this internal criticism, right, this inner bitch, if you make like one mistake or you skip out on an action step that you were supposed to do or whatever the case may be, that voice for so many women I find is like the default voice and I've got to a place now where my inner critic, my inner bitch is pretty quiet and if anything what I found is that self-compassion, a more compassionate voice is the default instead and I want to get you to that place, I know you can get to that place, so let's work on it together. I want to run through some um, insights behind the scenes of the inner critic today and then I want to go into some of the steps, basically like the exact steps that I took in this area. So I've got my notes, For those of you who don't know, I've got a new dog. It is very challenging right now, having a new dog, having a second dog who is adopted and very nervous. And I have full on kind of brain, not brain fog, but just like trying to be focused on work. I'm sure you know what I mean. If If you've had a puppy or a dog, and you're trying to get them settled in and struggling to concentrate. So I have my notes today so I can stay on track. So the first thing that I wanna say is a big mistake I see people making with their inner bitch, right, their inner critic, is that they think this voice is cruel, like is out to get them, is evil, right, has bad intentions. But actually your inner critic is trying to keep you safe. And even the title of this episode, I've titled it in a way where I know people want to do that. Like I know people want to just shut up that horrible voice in their head. And I get that and I've been there so many times. And even seeing your inner critic in a different light as something that is trying to keep you safe is going to almost like lighten the load in your approach to this. So your inner critic has a strategy that it's using right now to try and keep you safe. Even if that strategy of being critical of yourself, putting pressure on yourself, beating yourself up when you're not perfect, even if that strategy is actually detrimental to you, to your mindset, to your well-being, 
it's still a strategy you know it's still just trying its best and what I have found and it was a really great um, discussion on this in the free workshop I held a couple of weeks back on this topic is your inner critic is an in, often an internalized voice from your upbringing or from a specific um, significant person in your life and that could be a teacher you had at school it could be a certain parent or caregiver or family member it could even be like a school bully you know it could be someone someone anyone that either you know criticized you or held you to high standards maybe um reprimanded you as a child even well intending right you know it's not that everyone has an inner critic because awful things have happened everyone has some sort of traumatic event from their childhood even if to say it out loud would be oh that's not too bad like you you know I think I speak to a lot of people who say oh nothing really bad has happened I had a decent childhood I had a good childhood I had a happy childhood etc even if that is the case you will still have unconscious conditioning and trauma that you've dealt with as a child even with the most loving well-meaning teachers caregivers parents you know and we can internalize certain language that is used certain phrases that are used um we see this a lot as well in modeling so modeling basically means a child is like a sponge and is looking out at the world and trying to soak up information to say right that's how mummy speaks to herself or that's how dad reacts when he makes a mistake or something you know something goes wrong and like absorbing that so modeling can also be at play where it might not have even been projected onto you necessarily but if your parent was really critical of themselves or you know use certain language like I'm such an idiot oh my god I fucked this up or whatever they might have said if you're in earshot of that you're gonna absorb that and potentially model like match and model that because you're learning how to deal with the world and you might learn as a child that making a mistake is the worst thing in the world or um you know to do to not be perfect right or to like not be hitting these you know impossible standards or to you know fuck something up or to skip out on doing something that you said you were going to do whatever the case might be you might be watching that behavior happening and creating a meaning in your mind that that's not okay even the opposite of of this can create an inner critic so you might have learned that if you are a really good girl and if you are really well behaved at school and you get the best grades and you are perfect top of class the list goes on you might have learned that that is what you need to do in order to feel loved to be acceptable to be like accepted and loved and praised by your parent or caregiver and that can create the inner critic because then again the inner critic just trying to keep you safe just trying to maintain your like perspective and model of the world if you learnt as a child that you needed to be perfect or you needed to be the good girl or if you were top of class that's when you got the most love the most praise you're in a critic can become an internalized voice that is basically trying to help you and i use bunny ears on the video 
help you maintain that might not be the best strategy but it is trying to help you do that because it's trying to make sure that you're perfect or that you're adhering to these standards so that you are loved and accepted and there are so many ways and reasons and experiences and um, perspectives that model and, and create your inner critic but I just wanted to share some of my approach and my perspective on that because I think it's really important that your inner critic is not something that is out to get you necessarily you know it's it's generally trying to attempt to keep you safe from some sort of danger whether that danger is not being loved and accepted or whether it's being rejected whether it's being abandoned whether it's being humiliated whatever you know your childhood has added up to your experience your inner critic is is being formed from that and is trying to keep you safe and the other thing I would say as well is your mind seeks safety in the known so let's say that self-criticism has been the default mode for you for most of your life even that in itself means that it's a learned unconscious pattern an unconscious habit even when you think about it a thought can be a habit because you can have a habit of thinking certain thoughts right you can have a habit that when x happens y happens so when i break something around the house my like that triggers a thought that i'm st- i'm stupid or i'm i'm an idiot or i always fuck things up or whatever the crit- whatever the inner critic would say that in itself is a learned behavior and is a known a known behavior and so a known behavior right a known pattern feels safer than doing something completely different than like doing something that feels uncertain or feels out of the ordinary so that's why it can also feel really difficult to flip that on its head and be kind to yourself right and be more self-compassionate because for many people we're literally unpacking and unpicking and it's you know it can happen very quickly for many people but for some it can take time but unpacking a learnt behavior that's happened for the over the course of your life basically so with all that said how do we then silence that voice quieten that voice learn to work with it so that we can actually do what we really want in life let's get into it I want to share with you (coughs) excuse me how I healed that self-criticism how I moved into being more compassionate to myself being kinder to myself being softer with myself treating myself with more respect with more grace the first thing is gently observe you're in a critic like it's an internalized voice (coughs) sorry I don't know what has happened with my throat I feel like I'm still semi recovering from whatever I had when I got back from New York a couple weeks ago so this is a practice that we talk about a lot in meditation if any of you are meditators with you're in a critic it's like there's different parts of you you know there's part of you that is really kind to yourself there's part of you that is quite neutral there's part of you that is really critical you know there's a part of you that wants to be perfect so there's a part of you that um doesn't give a shit and wants to rebel against it all (laughs) and um i'm thinking of one of my clients who works with ifs and 
both like IFS but also in NLP which is mainly what I use with clients we work with parts because we believe that there are different aspects to you there are different parts of you and you're in a critic just like you're in a child just like your higher self just like all these words that you'll hear me use you're in a critic is just one part of you and so that means it is not the whole part of you it is not who you are and so being able to take a step back and have that perspective you can observe your inner critic in your mind as if it's like almost as if it's someone else talking and an example I have here is if someone was shouting and screaming at you on the street would you believe every word they said like you're walking to the shops and there's someone on the street and all of a sudden they're shouting you down they're hurling abuse at you or like they're calling you names or they're criticizing you would you take that that person's word as gospel probably not because you don't know them and you also recognize that they're in they're a different external person like they are not you and in the same way your inner critic is not you it is one aspect of your consciousness but if you can work to observe it in that way you are gonna feel like you have much a much cleaner like clearer perspective with the work you you have lying ahead of you in order to heal from it right in order to do that deeper work to long term feel like you are more co- compassionate to yourself and you can do that in so many ways one of the best things you can do is simply to start noting So a practice called noting is basically naming it as it comes up and in noting it, in naming it, you are observing it. And if you're observing it, then that means it's not you. In the same way that you're observing that, you know, weird person on the street shouting at you for no reason, you are therefore observing something external to you. And so in observing a thought, in observing an emotion even, a thought, a trigger, whatever it is, that is causing that inner critic to be loud, you are feeling and thinking as you whilst listening to that. So that's the first thing and one of the most important things you can do. The second thing and this goes, you know, much deeper, it's like the next layer of this, is I quietened my inner critic by healing the root causes of it. By getting to the root cause of my inner critic and healing it from there. Because like we were just talking about, it came from somewhere you know, I've shed some light potentially on some examples, on some common, you know, traumas or childhood upbringing stuff that can come up. Obviously, everyone's is so unique, but it came from somewhere. You know, it comes from somewhere and something, a person, a situation, a trauma, whatever it is. And within my method of working together, I call it the light up level up method one of the elements of that method is called heal the roots because if you are gardening and you are trying to de-weed a garden you cannot just cut off the leaves of a root you cannot just cut the leaves off and mow the lawn and expect not to have weeds in your garden if there is a weed in the garden we need to pull it out of the root we need to get to that root cause otherwise it's just going to keep coming back and so 
that's so often why going back to that unconscious learned habitual behavior of thinking critically that is there's roots there like and if you think of roots roots grow like deep down into the ground so there's deep work needed often to get long-term benefit from inner critic work you know from self-love work from self-compassion work and I often find that root cause, those roots growing down, create a knock-on impact, a knock-on effect. So if we heal the root cause, that is some inner child work or past trauma or whatever it might be, there is then this knock-on effect that creates this catalyst, creates this momentum, this domino that can knock knock down and assist with getting rid of like present day thoughts behaviors beliefs etc that are rooted in that inner critic so that is one of the most important things you can do but the first step of just observing it is a really great thing to start with ultimately for the lasting change it's healing it at the root Many clients find that they have a loud inner critic because they had to be a good girl in the house and not upset their parents. This creates the inner critic through high standards of their own behaviours. If you learnt that when you were good, that equaled love and acceptance, you're going to feel unsafe when you're at risk of not being loved and accepted. And so going back to memories of childhood where you maybe messed up and were criticized or even phrasing like hearing your parents talk about you and say oh they're such a good girl you know working with these memories working with these condition working with this conditioning using that unconscious deeper rewiring mindset work is going to have that knock-on effect to where that inner child like that younger version of you doesn't always feel like she has to be a good girl all the time you know if that is something that is an aspect that you want to heal and and release and process because it's going to help you move forward so that's one example I know I touched on that before but I wanted to read it out in my notes again the third thing I did when it came to silencing my inner bitch my inner critic is developing my self-compassion muscle and you can do this too so this is not a linear process like i said the healing the root cause is going to create that lasting effect but all three of these you know will will benefit you if you're finding that you're really critical of yourself at the moment and you're putting tons of pressure on yourself and going back to what we were saying about the inner critic being a learned habitual way of thinking way of speaking to yourself your self-compassion right now is like a muscle and that muscle is probably quite weak and is probably weakened over time imagine you know having not not ever gone to the gym for the first time and all of a sudden wanting to have really strong legs or like you know I think like most girls right having to want you know wanting a really nice big bum and wanting to like lift weights and lift heavy and like build up your glutes you can't just expect to go to the gym for the first time ever, do a few squats, do a few hip thrusts with a dumbbell and then, you know, be really strong. You're gonna struggle. You're gonna need to use a lighter weight. You're gonna need to take time. Like you're gonna need to have patience because it's building the muscle. It's a strength that is building. And so your self-compassion is the same 
if you've never done a squat in your whole entire life, you're gonna need time to build that strength in that muscle, in those muscle groups. If you've never been truly compassionate to yourself or if you have rarely been compassionate to yourself, overcritical of yourself, that is gonna take time. And so developing and practicing, flexing this self-compassion muscle is gonna be so beneficial for you. And that can come in the smallest of decisions, in the smallest of ways. I have an example here from a client recently and I'll often find that over the period of working together, there'll be these moments of moments in time where a client will share that she knew from a logical perspective that she should be doing one thing, but instead she's chosen to do something kind to herself because she knew that that was the kindest thing to do in that moment. So this particular client sent me a message saying, I had some time set aside to do some work this afternoon, but I'm feeling like the best thing I can do is to relax in the garden, in the sunshine. And this particular, you know, this particular client has been through a tough time and has still been working, you know, still been doing, you know, doing her work, running her business, working with clients, etc. And choosing to do that in that moment is her flexing her self-compassion muscle. Now, this particular client I'm talking about has a really strong self-compassion muscle, but life, as we know, is created in each moment, in each decision we make you're always deciding to do something. So just as you can, you know, decide to not interrupt the pattern that is being critical of yourself, putting pressure on yourself, you can decide instead to do something kind, to make a kind decision. And that might be saying no to something that you don't want to do. And to you, that feels huge and it feels like a big flex of that self-compassion muscle it might be listening to your body and thinking well yeah I did say I was going to go for a run today or go to the gym today but I'm actually sleep deprived right now or I'm under the weather or I'm really stressed and what is going to be the kindest thing for me in this moment is to go for a really gentle walk that for someone else could be the kindest thing I can do for myself right now is get up, get my butt up from my desk and go to the gym because I've been sat down at my desk all day working. There are so many moments throughout your day where you can choose to have your inner bitch running the show, cracking the whip, putting pressure on yourself or you can choose self-compassion. And every time you choose self-compassion, you are flexing that muscle and building that strength. And of course it takes practice, of course it takes intention. For most people as well, it takes support, it takes accountability, it takes consistency. And I guess that's where I come in, right? That's where a coach comes in because if you think about it, if you for decades have struggled with putting pressure on yourself, procrastination or perfectionism, you know, really internalizing negative thoughts about yourself, holding yourself to impossible high standards and not, you know, feeling feeling like the default mode is criticism that is not always going to be easy to flip on its head unless you have deeper support with it right unless you know that you don't need to do it alone and that it can be it can be done 
on your own of course it can but it's going to be much more difficult because what I see as well is if someone if someone's inner critic is like in the driver's seat of their life running the show like driving them forward it's so often hard for that person to just switch those roles and just have this inner critic all of a sudden not making their decisions not driving their decisions and if we go back to what we were speaking about way back at the beginning of this episode so much of that so much of the driver behind the inner critic is deeper work right is conditioning is childhood stuff is potential trauma is limiting beliefs you know all this all this stuff over years and years is compounded and having some support to unpick and process and release that is going to make such a huge difference and using motivation alone especially if you're someone who struggles with criticism with self-criticism can often not work on by itself because there's that unconscious stuff happening but also if you are someone who puts pressure on yourself what what can tend to happen is you try to fight fire with fire so you feel frustrated that you have this inner critic you feel frustrated that it's running the show you feel frustrated that all you want to do is just relax and be kind to yourself and sorry if you can hear Benji snoring (laughs) and take more time for self-care and all this stuff and you try to fight fire with fire there by putting pressure on being kind to yourself right putting pressure on oh this this you know this inner bitch just needs to shut up and go away and that doesn't work long term because a it's exhausting and b it's ineffective you know it's ineffective because it's that root the roots have grown down into deep into the ground of your inner critic and you trying to tackle it with motivation alone oh well I'll just try to put myself first I'll just try to make more time for myself I'll just try is like clipping the leaves on the weed and thinking it's going to be gone and it's probably not you know it's that surface level work can get you started but it's not going to bring you that lasting change so with all that being said I hope you found this helpful if you are resonating with this if you struggle with your inner critic if you want more compassion kindness grace please 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 check out how we can work together in September so there are currently two ways that we can work together the first is my one-to-one program and this is for you if you are ready to do step two like heal the roots get to that root cause feel that long lasting relief feel like a whole different woman in three to six months time when it comes to you're in a critic and also other things you're struggling with so one-to-one work is perfect for that deeper layer also amazing if you've maybe done other personal development you know you've you've read books you listen to podcasts you've you know what's going on but you're still struggling one-to-one work is going to be incredible for you because you might just need like I've said you might just need that additional layer of bespoke support accountability and that unconscious like reprogramming work that you can't do by yourself because it's like you're in it you know it's surrounding you you need a practitioner you need a skilled coach to help you step out of that picture and have that bird's eye view and see it from a new light so that's one-to-one and the other way we can work together is the sisterhood so if you're not quite ready for one-to-one work yet or like that's not for you right now 
but you want to work together more, you want to get started or you want to access incredible resources, tap into an amazing community, the sisterhood is where it's at to start. We also have tons on there already for you to get started with like as soon as you join if you want to on this exact topic plus obviously dozens and dozens of others we've got three years of content in there at this point but there's a workshop in there on self-belief there's a workshop in there on silencing your inner critic so even more on this topic there's guided breath work within that there's meditations there's so many other resources in there that you're going to be blown away by the amount of stuff I actually had a dm from someone a few months ago who joined and messaged me to say wow like there is so much in here the value is insane and so you are very likely to be blown away by what is in there and you literally can get started as soon as you join which is amazing we have our live call as well next monday night i believe next week anyway we have our manifest your goals call so you get master classes and live calls and it's an incredible place to get started so depending on where you're at like i said those are your next steps if you're interested in working together and of course if you have message if you have questions if you want to message me please reach out i'll pop my instagram in the show notes of the podcast as well for anyone listening and please like slide into my dm send me a voice note send me a message i'm always more than happy to share especially if you're like this is where i'm at what do you think i am gonna guide you based on you know the hundreds of women i've worked with to be able to share i think right now it sounds like the sisterhood is what's best for you or yeah we need to work on that in a one-to-one setting i'm always more than happy to give that honest opinion even if it's like yeah this isn't going to be a good fit for you right now but i know you can be supported in this as well or vice versa so send in those questions send in those messages and yeah thanks for tuning in thanks for listening this is such a prevalent like epidemic still amongst women that you know women can be so cruel in their mind they can have this default mode of criticism constant doubt constant criticism constant negative thoughts about themselves poor self-image the list could go on right and I just want you to know at the end of this podcast here that doesn't need to be the case for you you get to have your default mode be self-compassionate be kind be loving be soft be gracious with yourself you get to have that you get to have that and I hope the steps I've shared today have shown you your next step to doing that so With that being said, thank you so much for tuning in and I will speak to you very soon. I'll see you later.